about the fourth dimension. Now, to approach that, let's consider a cube. We can imagine a cube in the following way. You take a line segment and move it at right angles to itself in equal length. That makes a square. Move that square in equal length at right angles to itself, and you have a cube. Now, this cube, we understand, um, casts a shadow. And that shadow, we recognize. It's, you know, ordinarily drawn in uh, third grade classrooms as two squares with their vertices connected. Now, if we look at the shadow of a three-dimensional object in two dimensions, we see that, in this case, not all the lines appear equal. Not all the angles are right angles. The three-dimensional object has not been perfectly represented in its projection in two dimensions, but that's part of the cost of losing a dimension in the projection. Now, let's take this three-dimensional cube and project it carry it to a fourth physical dimension. Not that way, not that way, not that way, but at right angles to those three directions. I can't show you what direction that is, but imagine that there is a fourth physical dimension. In that case, we would generate a four-dimensional hypercube, which is also called a tesseract. I cannot show you a tesseract because I and you are trapped in three dimensions. But what I can show you is the shadow in three dimensions of a four-dimensional hypercube or tesseract. This is it. And you can see it's two nested cubes, all the vertices connected by lines. And now the real tesseract in four dimensions would have all the lines of equal length and all the angles right angles. That's not what we see here, but that's the penalty of projection. So you see, while we cannot imagine the world of four dimensions, we can certainly think about it perfectly well. In the 1940s, an Austrian immigrant to America and refugee from Nazi Germany, Dr. Wilhelm Reich, made the scientific discovery of a previously unknown energy existing in the atmosphere, in space, and within living organisms. Discovered accidentally, Dr. Reich eventually demonstrated this blue glowing energy to charge up and radiate from microorganisms, plants, animals, and humans. This energy also existed in a free form within the open atmosphere and in high vacuum. He called this energy the Orgon. Orgon energy, as Dr. Reich discovered, was synonymous with life energy, long postulated by scientists and accepted as fact by ordinary people from around the world. Orgon energy could be gathered in its free form directly from the atmosphere using a device he later called the Orgon Energy Accumulator. A simple enclosure resembling a large hollow capacitor, composed of alternating layers of special insulators and conductors, the Orgon Accumulator allowed a high charge of the Orgon to collect inside itself, facilitating its direct study and revealing many of its properties. Dr. Reich observed the organ energy charge in the human biosystem was expressed in emotion and sexuality and could be measured bioelectrically. A person's overall vitality and aliveness was a function of human and atmospheric organ charge and pulsation, and this could often be increased by sitting inside the organ accumulator. Organ charge of the tissues was a fundamental component of the immune system, as revealed in the bioelectric charging of red blood cells. The organ accumulator was found to boost the immune system of people who sat inside them for periods of approximately 30 minutes a day over many days and to thereby promote health and reduce the symptoms of some diseases. So incredible were the healing effects of the organ accumulator that Dr. Theodore Wolf, a pioneer in psychosomatic medicine and associate of Dr. Reich, called the organ accumulator the most important discovery in the history of medicine bar none. Another German physician has stated, 
Failure to use the organ accumulator in the treatment of severe burns constitutes medical malpractice. Dr. Reich observed the orgone energy had a blue color and he reasoned the earth was surrounded by an envelope of blue glowing orgone energy. He observed the streaming of protoplasm in the cells and movements of smooth muscle tissue bore a resemblance and functional similarity to the movements of streaming cloud patterns and to the illuminating an animal-like aurora phenomenon. This was years before high-altitude aircraft discovered the atmospheric jet streams and more than a decade before the astronauts returned color photos of the Earth's blue glowing atmosphere. Dr. Reich reasoned that both the hurricanes and galaxies were created and put into motion by superimposing streams of orgone energy in a cosmic dance similar to the sexual attraction between male and female. He demonstrated the existence of orgone energy in deep vacuum tubes, which also glowed blue when charged up inside orgone energy accumulators. The orgone energy filled all space, he argued, satisfying many of the descriptions of the older cosmological ether of space, or what modern astronomy confusedly calls dark matter, and which is identified as an anomalous blue glowing halo surrounding galaxies. Even more controversial, Dr. Reich developed a method to run small motors with the orgone energy. He also developed orgone energy devices for affecting the atmospheric orgone and clouds to bring rains during droughts or even into large deserts. Dr. Reich demonstrated the same life energy or orgone energy in a number of carefully controlled experiments too much to report in this short video which allow us to make these short summary statements with reasonable scientific certainty. His publications on these subjects presented very positive results from his experimental work but this only added to the hysterical outrage of his critics. They slandered his early research on human sexuality, called the orgone accumulator a sex box, and subjected Dr. Reich and his associates to character assassination and slander. Dr. Reich's work and ideas were chronically misrepresented in popular newspaper and magazine smear articles. Fraudulent information and outright lies, and without investigating his work in any serious manner, the medical establishment encouraged the U.S. Food and Drug Administration to seek and obtain a court injunction to stop Dr. Reich's research, writing, and speaking about his discovery. In a legal case which has far greater significance to American freedoms and the U.S. Constitution than the better known Scopes Monkey Trial, Dr. Reich was finally charged with contempt of court for the technical violation of an obscure cosmetic labeling law. He and an associate, Dr. Michael Silvert, were sent to prison, and Dr. Reich's books and research journals were ordered banned from interstate commerce, and existing copies were burned in New York City incinerators. Dr. Reich died in prison in 1957, while Dr. Silvert committed suicide shortly after his release. Victims of a left-wing smear campaign merged with organized big medicine and pharmaceutical interests. Fortunately, most of Dr. Reich's books survived and were republished.